Hey, what's going on, everyone? It is Behavior here again, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Just My Opinion. So where this week, this time, this episode, we, of course, are going to be talking about the box office results for the past weekend. Actually, the first weekend of April, April Fool's weekend, uh, Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. We're talking about the box office, but not only are we talking about that. We're also going to do, uh, briefly discuss Fantastic Four, Captain Marvel, New Mutants, and um, uh, Dark Phoenix with Fox. But let me go ahead and knock that out first, and then we'll go ahead and get to the box office next. And this box office won't just focus mostly on Black Panther, because, you know, I've been obsessed with that. It will focus on everything. But uh, last week, we got a bunch of news uh, coming from Marvel. It was actually some Marvel and DC news, but I'm just going to cover Marvel right now. First bit of news is Fantastic Four. It looks like the comics... Uh, the uh, Marvel Studios or Marvel Entertainment or Marvel whatever is decided to reunite the or reignite the flame for Fantastic Four and bring them over uh, to the comics. Now, we all know that uh, Fantastic Four originally is Marvel, but 20th Century Fox has the rights to that. And in 2015, the Marvel um, Entertainment or real Marvel, Marvel, Marvel Disney, they canceled the comic books. Um, of Fantastic Four. Uh, there was a lot of beef going on in between the studios with Fox and Marvel, Marvel Disney, but now it seems like they wanted to bring the comics back. Now, why would they stop making the comics in the first place? Well, competition, they don't, they, um, I imagine that since 20th Century Fox is making these, these Marvel movies that are not as good, especially Fantastic Four, that fan, that fan four stick was horrible. I uh, hated that movie strongly disliked it they don't want those films to do well because the 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 worse they do the higher the chances are that the you know fox will be like okay we we're giving up you know rights are going to go back to marvel well if you have comic books circling around of that same property that same name that same ip that's going to heighten the popularity hence more people will go to the theater so that's like hey let's just take away all the merchandise take away all the comics and you know th and there you go but now they're putting the comics back so that tells me that Either this, uh, I mean, right, we all know that Disney bought Fox last November and that's still pending right now. But, um, you know, we, we're waiting on government approval. But it looks like that may go through. It's still going to take a le at least another year. Or, you know, Fox just may be like, okay, we, we're not going to make any more. You can have Fantastic Four rights back and we just don't know that yet. And maybe we'll know this year in Comic Con or next year in Comic Con. Um, if I was Marvel slash Disney, I would not announce my phase four until, um, it was it Comic Con of 2019? That's, I mean, that's just my opinion on the way I would do it. Um, of course, if they do it this year, Infinity War and Ant-Man and the Wasp will already be out. Um, and then, you know, next year we get Captain Marvel and Avengers 4 and Spider-Man, you know, too. But if you can wait all the way to next year, all those movies will be out. You will get a great reaction from the world to see how we receive these next five films, which is kept um, Infinity War. And Man of the Wasp, Captain Marvel, and, uh, and Avengers 4, and then uh, Spider-Man 2 Homecoming. So I'm very happy about that. I don't know if I'm going to read the new Fantastic Four comments, but you know, let me know what you think about that news in particular. If you are going to be picking up the Fantastic Four uh, new comics or you know what, you, what take you get uh, from me just saying that. Another thing that happened in news is they're saying that Adrian Coulson and uh, Ronan the Accuser, not Ronan the... Um, then I forgot his name. Korath. Agent Coulson, and what is the dude's name? Is it Ronan the Accuser? I cannot believe I forgot his name that quick. But they are going to be debuting, or come, not debuting, but coming back um, in Captain Marvel, which comes out next March, which makes perfect sense because that film is to being taking place in the 90s. Of course, we're going to have Samuel Jackson reprising his role. It's all in the past. Um, you know, he's going to have both of his eyes. I was really sad. Spoiler alert. Avengers 2012. When Agent Phil Coulson died in that movie, I was like, oh, I really did like his character. People are always saying that there's no deaths in the MCU. Well, he died. Well, what about the Avengers? Well, Quicksilver died in Age of Ultron. 
But I, I really do like Agent Coulson. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the Agents of Shear show, not because of him. I just think the show was horribly written. Now, it has gotten better and better and better over the years, and I have not seen this latest season. I think they're in season six right now where they go in space or something like that in the future. I don't know what's going on. I still need to finish the last few episodes of um, of number five. As far as Karath play by um, uh, Jimon Hansu, uh, the black guy, uh, he was cool. He's going to be back as well. And um, I talked about, I'm still trying to find this dude's name. I, I Gamora Drax grew. I'm, I don't see it. Okay, Ronan. Uh, it just says Ronan. I don't know how that is. Is it Ronan the Accuser? But yeah, Lee Pace is going to be coming back as well. Uh, Marvel started out with their villains b- being pretty weak, but they have been great as of late. But Ronan, or Ronan the Accuser, um, I feel like I'm getting his name wrong. Ronan something. But Ronan, he was horrible to me. But, you know, let's see if there, he's going to have some development. As far as New Mutants is concerned, they're pushing that back even more. I don't give a crap. I don't give a crap talking about it was a good movie, but they wanted to be more horror. And they're going to be filming over 50% uh, of reshoots. Reshoots are normal. They're scheduled for it, but not to this extent, especially when you have to push the date the date back. It was supposed to come out this month, but then it got pushed to um, next uh, then it got pushed to the end of the uh, next year, and then it's being pushed back even further. And also, uh, the Dark Phoenix movie, that was supposed to come out in November, but that's being pushed to February. I think it will do well in February. It will be the lo- first largest release February of next year. Black Panther did that. Deadpool did that. It performed well, so that's fine. Um, I'm looking for more forward to the, uh, the, the Dark Phoenix movie more than I am New Mutants, but at the same time, I don't care either way for any of those films uh, because I'm just ready for a Marvel Disney, the real Marvel, to get all of their IP back, all of their characters back so we can have the best cinematic universe of all time, of, uh, you know, beyond our own imagination. So what you think about that Fantastic Four and New Mutants, uh, the Dark Phoenix movie and... Um, Agent Phil Coulson, Ronan, and Korath coming back from Guardians of the Galaxy to be in Captain Marvel. I'm happy, very, very happy about that. But you probably did not tune in for that, guys. You probably tuned in for the box office results. So let's go ahead and jump into it. I have not looked at them at all today. I promise you I have not. All I did is pull up a few websites here and there, but I haven't actually looked at the numbers. I did look yesterday. Uh, but I was like, should I do a video today? But I was like, well, today is the estimate. Well, now let me wait until the actual numbers come out because we also may get uh, more uh, foreign release numbers as well. And if you can provide a better source for me to look out to get my um, foreign numbers, please let me know down in the comment section below. But coming in at number one, we already knew this was going to happen. It is Ready Player One. Coming in with $41,764,050 at uh, theaters, uh, 4,234 theaters with an, um, okay, I just got confused because that's, that's the four day weekend. I'm sorry about that guys, but yeah, ready player one, $40 million. 4,200 theaters. It was pretty much a given. Uh, this movie opened on Friday, or actually it opened on Thursday. It was pretty much a given that this film was going to uh, be number one. Um, the entire domestic run right now for uh, Ready Player One is 53 million. Now, the that comes from the Wednesday night and all of Thursday's box office. That does not include today, Monday. That is Wednesday night, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So it wasn't 53 million. Did not be misled. It was 41 million. Right now, globally, it is at 181 million dollars worldwide. Now, as far I mean, I guess that's okay. Um, I heard from another video that Ready Player One did around the same that Black Panther did, and it's opening weekend at like 65 million dollars, which is good. But at the same time, when you look up the budget for Ready Player One, it is at 175 million dollars, and that is a pretty pricey uh, film, if you ask me. So this film is going to be needing to make at least 500 million worldwide just to break even. But you know my formula, three times the budget. Doesn't mean it's a guaranteed hit, but that's kind of the safe zone. I said 175. Uh, I can't do math. But let's see. What's 175 times three? 
that's 525 um so yeah let's let's hopefully this i mean if you want please subscribe to my channel you can go check out my review for ready play one i really did enjoy the film really did enjoy the film i think you will too to be honest with you um so go check out my review i didn't think it was the best in the world but ready player one was one of my most anticipated films of uh 2018 um but that is coming in at number one as expected coming in at number two is tyler perry's acrimony my goodness gracious, uh, if you subscribe to my channel, you can go and check out my review there as well. Uh, the movie came in at $17 million at 2,000 locations. Um, this theater average was, is that, that doesn't make sense. 8,000, I must be looking at that wrong. I, I think that's, hold on, that doesn't make any sense. Huh, I guess, well, I, I just won't talk about that stat because I honestly don't know what it means and I only like to talk about stuff that I, I know but Tyler Perry's movie comes in at uh, 17 million dollars at number two that was to be expected the budget for this movie was 20 million dollars um, that had to go to all of that money had to go to Taraji P. Henson's uh, paycheck maybe Taraji P. Henson and Tyler Perry's paycheck that, that just has to go to that because if you see my review I, this movie was horrible one of the worst movies of the year. One of the worst movies I've seen in the past uh, five years. Just to be honest with you, and I'm going so I'm going I'm bashing the movie even harder because Tyler Perry he's not the best director in the world, but he's a talented director and he knows how to feed his audience. And I've seen him do films that are much better than this. I mean, literally every other film he's done has been better than the Acrimony. Now I haven't loved. I mean, I would rather see a Medea movie than this movie again. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do a spoiler review. I might. I may hit up Malcolm. Um, I hit him up this weekend. He we were supposed to review Isle of Dogs, but he texted me back and I just missed his text. I need to hit him back. So my bad, bro. But I want to see if because we reviewed a Tyler Perry movie a long, many, many, many years ago when I first started this channel. But that came in at number two. Um, I mean, Tyler Perry knows this audience. I may review it again because when I looked at my review again today, I was like, B, I didn't even really say anything other than the movie sucked. I really did just dive in as to why I had such a high disdain for it. I think I was just so frustrated at the time. I said in my review that I can't, even, it's so bad that it's un undescribable. But now that I've had more time to think, I may be able to talk about it a little bit more. But what came in at number three? What came in at number three, baby? You already know what it is. It's Black Panther coming in with another $11 million. Uh, it has dropped down to 2,000, nearly still 3,000 theaters, 2,988. It only had a 32% drop, which is awesome. Right now, it is sitting domestically at $650 million worldwide. Foreign is $624 million worldwide to have a worldwide come of $1.275 million, $1.2 billion, I'm sorry, $1 billion, $275 million, $37.64 already, baby. And I am going to come back to Black Panther. That is not all that I have to say about Black Panther. I can only imagine comes at number four, $10 million, had a 23% drop. The budget for that film was seven million dollars so it is doing great right now it wasn't released overseas and made it later on at some other time but the right now that's coming in at 55 million dollars uh faith-based film you know what and in my life when i only imagine i can only imagine came out i was like yes it's a uh, godly film i am a man of god and uh usually faith-based films suck but there was one faith-based film. I haven't seen Gods of Dead, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. I, I know this is the third one I've heard. The first one is good. I haven't heard any news for part two or three from people that I know personally. Uh, so I don't know if that's good or not. But if you've seen I Can Only Imagine, let me know if it's good. I do want to see it. Because uh, while the faith-based films are not good to me, I still appreciate them and uh, and can take in the message, you know. But as a, the message is great, but as a film itself, you know, and the acting and all that, it's not up to par. But there is one film that I can't remember the name of it. It had to do with a little boy. And I know that really doesn't narrow it down. Man, Faith. Let me try to t do a quick little Google search. Faith based films because i really want to recommend it if you are into faith-based films uh let's see here um 
list of Christian films. Let me just take a glance at this real quick. Okay, I don't want to look at 1916. Let's scroll all the way. Okay, this was within the past few years. Uh, God's Not Dead, Miracles from Heaven, No Risen, 90 No, Captive, Do You Believe for You? A matter of fact, believe me, Exodus, God's Not Dead, Heaven is for Real, Left Behind. I'm a. Dang, man. Okay, I think I went too far back. I like Courageous. Okay, let us go. Real quick, guys. I'm sorry. Be patient with me. Alter Ego's Apostle. Alone. Matter of faith, believe me. Heaven. Man. Do you, I know I would. S Miracles from Heaven, guys. No, dead Hex, I Ridge, Pocahontas, Risen. Dang, guys. Well, I. Uh, I can't find it. Maybe it's just not on here, but it was. It had to do with like a little boy, uh, and it was just so good to me. It got crap reviews, but it it was good to me, you know. But you know, hey, it is what it is. Um, you know, Pacific Rim Uprising is number five. It is now uh, better than the top five. Uh, it's not doing too well, guys. It, it it's at two hundred and thirty million dollars world worldwide right now. It brought in another nine million dollars. Sherlock Gnomes, I have not seen. That brought in seven million. And number six, Tomb Raider is down to number seven. Uh, brought in four point nine million dollars. Uh, right now, it's at two hundred and forty-seven million dollars. So I think eventually Tomb Raider will be okay. If it ain't made three hundred million by Avengers: uh, Infinity War, uh, you know I, I want you know get you know I wanted to make three times the budget. Uh, a wrinkle in time. Oh gosh, uh, four point eight million dropped forty percent. Let's see what a wrinkle in time is doing right now. One hundred. God dog. I know the uh, wrinkle in time. I'm sorry, Ava DuVernay. You just. Uh, I hope you get another chance. Love Simon at number nine brought in another four million dollars. And uh, the Apostle um, Paul, Apostle of Christ. I haven't seen it either. Three point four million dollars. Isle of Dogs is number eleven and two point nine million. And God's Not Dead is um, number twelve. A new release at two point six million dollars. What was the budget for that? I don't know. It isn't. Uh, it doesn't. I don't really care to look that up. But anyway, guys, uh, that is you know. So number one, Ready Player One, Acrimony to number two, Black Panda number three, I Can Only Imagine number four, and Pacific Rim number five. Now, uh, as far as Black Panther is concerned. That's what I, you know, I'm, I'm really uh, I'm excited about right now. Um, well, let me go here real quick. All time domestic. This is so beautiful. Black Panther is still at number five. Only thing above it is, of course, Star Wars The Force Awakens, the Avatar, Titanic, and Jurassic World. It will, of course, pass Jurassic World. It may do that today. It's going to pass Titanic um, at the end of the week. Um, so Black Panther is definitely going to end up number three, passing Titanic at $659 million. It's not going to beat Avatar. So domestically, as far as the money is concerned, it will stay at number three until Avengers Infinity War comes out uh, April 27th this month, baby. Now, um, the only way... Avengers Infinity War is not going to, you know, come out as if there is just some type of huge controversy to where like half of the cast was involved with some type of illegal sex code or, you know, abusing people or the movie just sucks something serious like Acrimony did. Um, yeah, but right now, Black Panther is number five. It will end up becoming number three as far as the Mexican is goes. As if you and just for inflation, of course. A Gone with the Wind is at 1.8 billion, and that number comes from if the ticket prices back in 1939 were as much as they were today, that movie probably would have made 1.8 billion dollars domestically. That's freaking insane! But Black Panther is at number 36. Man, uh, when you adjust for inflation, going all the way back to like the 19. I don't know, I don't said a bad word. Going all the way back to like the nearly the past 100 years, Black Panther is at number 36. That is dope as hell. And I'm so happy. Please excuse me for screaming, especially if you have on headphones. I just get a little excited sometimes. Worldwide. Let's look at world. I, 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 I apologize for screaming and then scream right after that. Worldwide, baby. Black Panther is number 11. 
You know what I'm saying? That's my Black Panther is at number 11 dance. <laughs> Uh, $1.75 billion. Only thing beating it right now is Frozen at one point, uh, $1.275 billion. $1 billion, $276 million. That's only $500,000 more than Black Panther right now. Like, well, no, $1,500,000. It's going to be Frozen. So, uh, Black Panther will, for a brief moment, hit be the top 10 worldwide. That's super dope to me. Uh, I am excited about that, but Avengers Infinity War will knock it down uh, from that a little bit later. And um, my favorite part of this, um, actually, well, yeah. So right now, Black Panther is number one as far as comic book movies of all time domestically. Yes, baby, yes. Also number one as far as the MCU is concerned. Yes, maybe yes, yes, yes. And... Um, Going down to, uh, yeah, it's a stat that I already talked about. Now, I'm so happy um, internationally. It's at $624 million. So, you know, I think that was the case last week, too. That's just, that's just uh, you know, makes me happy. Let me see what this gentleman has to say real quick. This is Brad Breverett with Box Office Mojo. I'm not going to read his whole article. Coming in, in on par... With Mojo's pre-weekend forecast, Steven Spielberg's Ready Player One topped the weekend's box office and delivered the largest opening weekend in 10 years. That's, you know, that's also Ready Player One is the second largest opening of 2018. The weekend also saw the strong second place debut for Lionsgate, Akamon, and ah, the latest film from Tyler Perry, while Black Panther and I Can Only Imagine remained. Um, there's no point in reading this. If I was on read this, I should have read this first. But real quick, uh, yeah. Internationally, Black Panther added another. Yeah, that's all stuff I talked about. And the last thing, and how much is Black Panther going to make domestically? And how much is it going to make over uh, worldwide? That's the last thing we're going to talk about. So I got my opening weekend showdown of Black Panther versus Star Wars The Force Awakens, Jurassic World, The Avengers, and The Last Jedi. So it is going to make $700 million. Uh, I was not too sure about that um, before but I am more than convinced now when you look at the showdown you look at the largest winner was 700 million next weekend and then 6 million next weekend so that's what third no let me look at the week let me look at the week past week it made 25 million dollars that even beat Star Wars The Force Awakens in the 6th week they had 19 million so the seventh week, Star Wars Fork and Wait, the whole seven days, not just daily, not weekend. It made $14 million in its seventh week. So Black Panther is going to make another 10, 15. Yeah, it's going to make $700 million. It may even make seven. I don't know. It got four more weeks left before Infinity War comes. Well, that's going to just knock everything off. You know what I'm saying? But if you look at the daily shutdown, guys, go all the way down here. In the past... Now, let me go back up and change this because I got the days of the week. Let me change this to by, uh, by the day number. I love box office mojo. I remember years ago, everybody thought they was going through some construction and everybody thought that they was gone. People lost their freaking minds. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. So out of the past 13 days... Oh, let me, let me, okay, let me reword that. In the 45th day of release, where we're talking about Black Panther, if you look at the past 13 days, Black Panther has won 10 out of those 13 days versus those other four films that I have listed. Uh, going all the way back to the 33rd day of release, all the way up to the 45th day of release. So, in a sense, Black Panther does have stronger legs than all of those films. Now, a big asterisk there is because this movie was released in February. Uh, the two Star Wars films were released in December. Everything comes out on Christmas. And then the other two films were released in like June and May. So that's the middle of summer. So you have to account for that. But still, we can release more films in February. I now, I now want to see a major blockbuster film released in January. And release in September and October. Those are the only three months left that we have not had a large blockbuster. And so I, I say that because I want these films to be spread out. I think there, I think, I think large blockbusters should all be a month apart year round. 
uh, and comic book movies too. Um, that's just my opinion. But um, right now, so let me go back up and change this today because some, so, you know, it, what, what, what you're trying to look at, it depends on day or the day of the week. You know, they're both beneficial. But right now, I want to look at the day of the week. So yesterday, Sunday, Black Panther brought in $3 million. This same day, The Force Awakens brought in 3.5. So Star Wars won that day. But right now, Black Panther is at six fifty million domestically, and at the same time, um, what is this Jurassic World? Because I'm scrolling, I gotta scroll up because I don't have the the names of the films uh, right here, all the way down. Uh, Jurassic World uh, was at six twenty four. That ended up making six fifty, and Black Panther is already there now. So yeah, Black Panther will make um, Black Panther will make six. So let me, okay, so that's, if I think it's going to make 50 million more, and then I'm going to add another 20 million for foreign at least, so that's 70 million. So now guys, Black Panther is going to make $700 million at least domestically, and what do I think it's going to make worldwide? Let me pull out my calculator. I'm going to just add $70 million to what... Uh, it is now. I think it's gonna make at least fifty more here in the states, and then maybe at least twenty more million uh, foreign. Maybe more than that foreign, but we're gonna be a little safe here. I don't want this video to go over thirty minutes. Damn it! One point seven five oh three seven six eight four plus seven. Ha! One point three, one billion three hundred forty-five million dollars. We're gonna round up, baby. Black Panther in this total worldwide run is going to make one million, one million, one billion three hundred and fifty million dollars worldwide. Would that dethrone the last Jedi as well? Will it? I where the hell is the cursor? I'm spitting stuff. Oh Lord. Oh man, okay, all time worldwide, and if it make, yeah, because I think that's at one point three, yeah. Star Wars: The Last Jedi is gonna make one point. I mean, Star Wars: the Last Jedi made one point three three one billion three hundred and thirty two million. Yeah, Black Panther got that baby. Black Panther is gonna be top ten, baby. Yes, it's gonna be number nine, but then uh, it's gonna uh, be number ten when Black Panther comes out. So I'm very confident in that, guys. If you want to help, go see Black Panther again. This is so much fun, guys. That is just my opinion for this week's uh, episode of Just My Opinion for the Black Panther box office. We talked about a number of other stuff, too. Let me know what you think about everything that we talked about. Let me know your numbers. Let me know your predictions. Let me know your opinion of the movies that were just released. If you liked them, if you hate them, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. Then go create another YouTube channel. Sign in, subscribe, and give me a thumbs up again, too. No, I'm just joking. Also, guys, uh, if you don't like the video, that's fine. You can also subscribe to my channel and also go to my website check me out there and bookmark it and also look me up on social media facebook instagram and twitter all that good stuff is right at the bottom of your screen and i made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review slash reaction to all this box office stuff and before you go don't forget that my name is brandon keith avery and that's just my opinion peace <laughs>